Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm featuring a different game, uh, it's not Hearthstone this time. This is an early access game that I've been playing on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash aerosounds, and it's called Citadel Forge with Fire. Now, this is an early access game, a kind of RPG sandbox game that I've been really enjoying, but because it's early access and there's not a lot of information about it out there, um, there's a lot of people asking questions in the chat, um, also in my Twitch chat people asking me about the game. So I thought I'd make the video so that new players have kind of got some idea of the basics, also how to do spell crafting and also taming which are some of the key parts of the game. But if you enjoy the video guys please let me know, also if you want me to make more videos like this on this game or other games let me know in the comments. And also if there's things that I've missed or other tips that you've got for new players just leave them down in the comments because it would be good to have kind of a section where people can come and kind of learn about this game. Just so you guys know, I did receive the game free from the developer, but I requested it. There was no requirement for me to make this video, it's just to play it on um, my Twitch channel, and it's not a sponsored video. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoy the video, and let's get started with some of the tips. So when you first start out, there is a very minimal tutorial that you can follow, and it's, I recommend doing that because you also get experience, and it gives you some very basic tips. But this is an early access game, so it's not very in-depth. What I would say is one of the first things you need to be doing, and as you can see here, is just pick up everything you can. Every time you pick something up in this game, you get some XP for it. And at the lower levels, that's really, really important. It can help you to level up quite quickly. The game is quite grindy, so any way that you can speed that up is good. You may run into problems at the start of the game, maybe with your inventory space, but to be honest, if you just pick them all up and then when you get full, just drop some plants because they're not rare at all. You'll find so many of them. And the more you pick up, the more experience you get. Now the tutorial does initially get you gathering things, wood and stone for example, but a lot of people get a bit confused to start with because you can't chop the wood from trees or get it off of stones at the beginning of the game, you need to pick it up off the floor. So if you look carefully in the undergrowth you'll find branches and also these small stones which you can pick up. The stone is probably where a lot of people fall down, they, they think they can try and get out of a rock by punching it or something, but initially before you actually get a hatchet you'll need to pick them up off the floor. You can also go to high level areas and in the high level areas there's no gating so you can actually go straight there um, you just have to avoid the high level enemies but you'll notice here that whereas in the starting areas you get 10 XP for picking up things if you find rarer items you can actually get 20 or even 30 XP for picking them up so if you can find a level like I've found here it's quite good to return to it every now and again and get a bunch of XP just from picking up plants which are also useful. Leveling in this game is very similar to other games of this type, so every time you level up you do get stat points that you can put into four different categories, damage, health, carry capacity and mana. Health is important not only because it's your life total, but there is certain spells that you can cast that instead of using mana do use health, so if you're going for that type of build health is important. but. I usually go for damage or mana because I found that was really quite useful. Carrying capacity is important if you want to use the iron armor later in the game because it's heavier you'll need a higher capacity. For some reason once you've leveled up it gives you two points to spend. For some reason it does give you a remaining point that you can level up from this screen so I'd recommend that you make sure you do that. Now this screen is where you spend your knowledge points and you get them for leveling up. You can see I've got four here but it doesn't really matter when you use them, you can use them whenever you like. But each time you level up, there'll be different recipes that you can unlock and you just spend the points in there. So this is the building recipes that you can see here. There's also weapons, armor, and jewelry that you can craft, all of which are really important to give you extra stats. And finally, there's the potions that you can craft. Just another quick tip, early on in the game it asks you to make a fire, under the building section this is where you find it, so you spend your points to unlock fire, and then you can come out of this menu and go into the build menu, and under large magic items that's where you find the bonfire, and once you've found the items you need to, to craft it you can make a bonfire. So now I'm going to show you a little bit how the spell crafting works. So first of all you need to go to the menu and there's this little tab here called spellbook. 
and this is where you can create all of all of your spells and it's one of the most interesting parts of the game because there are lots of different spells that you can make but one of the key ingredients is these spell essences and you pick them up throughout the world from those big ball shaped things um, and the different colors refer to what kind type of magic they are so here you can see the menu um, you don't have to have one of these essences you can just go with arcane which is the default one but um, I'm going to show you how it works with storm so you just drag that in there and now we'll be making a lightning spell now up here gives you four choices of what type of spell so blast, area of effect, self and utility so I think we'll, we'll start with blast so you just select that then you need to select whether you want it left click or right click you can put up to two different spells on each weapon um, if you're using a melee weapon it's probably best to only use one because I usually put it on my right click um, because then your left click is attack with your melee weapon if you put two spells you can no longer melee that's just how it is at the moment maybe they'll change that in the future but so if you select which slot you want then you'll notice there's five spots here now these five spots can be used to upgrade the spells and you upgrade them with items you found in the world and that just you need to just kind of experiment with that and discover new items but here are some basic ones you can find and if you hover over them you can see what they do so you can see what this does adds up to seven percent range to craft spells so if you want a spell which goes further then you can use some fairy dust um, feathers do the same and actually do it more efficiently they add 10 percent so i'm going to put two of these in there and they stack as well so you can put as many as you want in um, crowberries do damage one percent and ghost orchids give extra spell energy now i'll explain what spell energy does but it basically just means how long the spell lasts pressure stone also does spell energy so we'll put two of those and we'll put a crowberry in there for damage and then all you need to do is click craft spell and then you've got a spell here concentrated storm now depending on the weapon these spells will be different so you, you can experiment to find which weapon you like and which spell you like off of each weapon but this is just a, a sword that I'm using here so now if I come out of the menu I can show you how it works so right click still does the melee because we haven't assigned a spell there but then if you left click, you do the spell. And this one obviously creates a sword which um, enemies can get trapped inside. And each spell has a cooldown which you'll see at the bottom. But this one looks like you can stack a few of them because it lasts. So that could end up doing quite a lot of damage over time to enemies. Um, but you'll also notice at the bottom, on my right click, where the spell is that there's a blue box around the outside of the box like a blue line that represents how much energy you have with the spell and that's what we improved by adding the pressure stones so the more you use the spell the more that box will deteriorate and when it's gone your spell will disappear from the weapon and you have to make a new weapon uh, a new spell to put on the weapon so that's that seems a little bit annoying at first but actually it allows you to just experiment with new spells all the time and it's not very hard to find the essences and other materials so it's a really cool system now I just wanted to show you another really important spell well two important spells actually that you'll probably need early on so if you ever want to remove the spell you can just right click on it and it will disappear from the weapon that you're using and probably the one of the most important you'll need early game is with nature's essence so put that in there and go utility and i'll put this on right click again and craft the spell what this does is extract so it's basically how you harvest items you can harvest them by using your axe or your melee weapon by hitting it but the melee weapons have um, durability and they'll break quite easily so extract spell is quite important another one which you'll really want is the taming spell for taming animals so that is light essence and a utility again now you have the it's called pacify but you use that to tame animals so you can see this is the one to gather resources and it does it automatically it, do, it does use your mana but once you find um, items which regenerate your mana this can basically go infinite once you get higher levels 
And then the pacify spell, if we can find an animal. Here we go. There's a rabbit here. That's how the pacify spell works, and I'll go into that in detail later. So taming is another cool aspect of this game, and it can be a little bit tricky, but first of all you need to have the pacify spell, which I talked about in the previous section. Um, you just need to make that, and that's what you use, as you can see here, to tame the animals. But the first thing you need to do is get the animal's health as low as possible. Um, somehow I managed to put this one down to one, but it doesn't need to be that low, just as low as you can get it without killing it. And then you just have to use the pacify spell to slowly pacify the animal, and it does take a little while. You can see around the portrait of the boar, there's a little blue line, and when that circle gets full, that's when the animal is tamed. Now this can take a little while and it can be a bit annoying, especially if you're lower level because you're constantly taking damage. But if you have some kind of healing um, and a, a way to restore your mana with potions, etc., you should be able to do it. I also found that taming bears is probably the easiest because bears don't run away. Some creatures, when you get them down to a certain amount of health, they will run away and it's difficult to tame them while you're chasing after them. You can increase the range of your taming spell with feathers, for example, and that does help. Um, there are also spells to make you go to run faster, but to be honest I think it's easier, especially when you're first starting out, just to try taming something which doesn't run away. Once the animal is tamed it will stop and you just have to press E on it. At that point you can name the animal whatever you would like, so that doesn't really matter, just call it whatever you want. You can then press E on the animal and it will give you a number of options. First of all you can leave it in, in its own place, in passive, aggressive or defensive modes, and then same modes for following you. Um, there's also an inventory that you can add in, um, put items in there, but also an option for you to dismiss the animal. So if you'd like to use the animal as a mount, you do need to craft a saddle. That is learned by spe spending your skill points in the knowledge menu. You need to research the saddle, then craft it. It takes quite a lot of leather, but once you've got it, it's, it's a really nice thing to use on the animals. All you need to do is have the saddle in your inventory, click on the animal that you'd like to use as your mount, and then just click on the button in the center and it adds the saddle to it, and you can just keep ride around on the animal. While you're riding, they do have their own attacks, but to be honest, apart from the dragon, I've found these attacks to be pretty useless. What is most important to use a, um, an animal for really is the extra speed that you get from running in it, and also um, carrying your inventory while you're out and about. Finally, it's important to note that you don't have the animal forever. There is a limited amount of time you have it, but you can control that by feeding the animal various different food items. And if you press N on the menu, it brings up all of your pets that you've got control of. And you can see here it tells you how long left in real time you've got the animal for and how long you can have the animal for in total. So all you need to do is put any type of food in there, so meat and milk and any cooked food works too. Poultry seems to be quite good. You put it in their inventory, and then when you press N again, you can see you'll have more time along with that pet. So any kind of food or meat you find that you're not using to heal yourself is good to put in the inventory of your, of your animals and help to keep them for longer. Because if you log out, you will lose them if you run out of time. Okay guys, that's all I've got to share for this video, but I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, please let me know in the comments if you've got any other tips for other people watching, or if there's any questions you've got, let me know and I'll try and answer them. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.